I'm Serge Pan <coughs> from, uh, sorry, from Myanmar. Uh, Minister Khan mentioned a point just now about the emergence of China or the appearance of China in the equation. I'd just like to make an, a comment on there. ASEAN as it is, we've been trying to talk about integration and we've been talking about leadership. Many of you probably know that actually there is a venue in China that is awarded or dedicated to ASEAN activities, right? That is in Nanning, Guangxi. China built this place specifically for ASEAN. Every ASEAN country has a right to come and apply for land, do whatever they think they should do. And yet, we do not see anything like that within the ASEAN countries. Now we talk about stimulus programs in this economic recession. Uh, I come from Myanmar, so being one of the least developed economies in ASEAN, we have a very clear and distinct feeling about what's happening vis-a-vis -vis Myanmar, China. The influence of China in Myanmar. The st within the Chinese stimulus package, there's 10 billion US dollars earmarked for, Ch for Myanmar. Uh, of that 10 billion, 4.5 billion has been used, and there's still 5.5 billion US dollars outstanding to be applied to be used. As long as a Chinese company can find a project, they can get a piece of that money and go to Burma or Myanmar to develop, build, do whatever. And in the last 12 months, Myanmar is full of Chinese companies all over the place, building power plants, building bridges, building, trying to build a railway, um, sugar factory, a fertilizer factory, you name it. Okay. All through a stimulus package. Now that stimulus package, I think, gave China double benefits. Not only did it stimulate the Chinese economy, gave a lot of job opportunities, gave um, a, a sort of a, a, a impetus and a, a good shot in the arm for Chinese companies. It also brought immense influence in Myanmar as far as Chinese companies are concerned. I feel that ASEAN countries, particularly the more developed ASEAN countries, have sort of forgotten about what they can do in their neighboring countries. And in that um, respect, I'd like to reflect on what Prime Minister Abhi said, said yesterday about the fact that as we go for integration, we do not want to leave anybody behind, he said. But I have not seen any specific and concrete actions about the richer nations of ASEAN trying to bring along or tack along the poorer economies. So in that respect, probably Minister Kwan could shed some light about how Thailand, um, what Thailand's plans are in that respect. But if you want integration with such a big disparity between the ASEAN countries, I fear that it's, a, it's going to be a very difficult task. It's going to be very hollow. And yet here, I think the business community can play a very big role, as it did in the early 90s when Singapore companies and Malaysian companies and Thai companies were en masse in Myanmar, and they're en masse in Vietnam and Cambodia in the recent years. But that has definitely gone low in terms of activity. And I, I wonder what the panel thinks about that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Serge, for making that point that China is a better ASEAN member than the ASEAN countries. Um, 
I'd like to um, invite uh, Minister Khan to respond to Serge's comments, as well as to provide some insight on this tension between the national and the regional uh, from a regulator's viewpoint. I think uh, these points being made are very valid. Um, I was just uh, mentioning to that Dato Nazir earlier before we, we commenced with this session that beyond the issue of nationalism, there is even uh, an ingrained sense of natural bias uh, against ASEAN uh, amongst uh, ASEAN members uh, in the sense that um, you know, individuals uh, remain educated in the UK, in the US, and, and there's a natural inclination um, at the elite level uh, of, of uh, willingness to accept the uh, expertise um, from the West uh, before uh, a willingness to accept um, expertise from, from within the region. So, you know, a banking regulator, for example, has to choose between uh, a city group uh, and, if I may say so, um, a CIMB or a DBS uh, may be naturally inclined uh, to go for what they believe to be you know, global standard before they go for regional standard. And that needs to change, but it needs to change from, from the perspective of the quality of the content as well, uh, as the likes of CIMB prove themselves to be um, able to operate uh, at international level. I think that barrier, the psychological barrier, uh, will, will also be broken.